Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out my trusty little 2012 MacBook Pro over there. We're going to talk about how it performs in different scenarios and give you information that you can use to decide if this is going to be a good machine for you or not. If you have any questions along the way, make sure you leave those down in the comments section. Also, if you're experienced with these, please check that comment section in case there's a question that somebody asked that I haven't answered yet or don't know the answer to. First of all, some of the specs on the machine. It's a mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pro. It's got a dual core, 2.5 gigahertz i5 processor. These machines originally came with four gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte spinning drive. And then the video is just the onboard graphics that are part of the CPU. That RAM and the storage, if you're looking at getting one of these or you have one with that default, the stock RAM and storage, first thing you wanna do is crack this open and upgrade both of those. I've upgraded this one to 16 gigs of RAM and 128 gig SSD, you definitely, definitely want to bare minimum upgrade that storage because it's just a 5,400 RPM spinning drive, which if you don't know what that is, it's ridiculously slow. Upgrade that to an SSD. And then uh, if you can afford the RAM, make sure you put the RAM in there as well. It's gonna make it like a whole new machine for you. Now on this machine, I have Catalina installed, which is the latest officially supported version of Mac OS. There is a way to install Big Sur and probably later on these using OpenCore, but I've read about problems with Wi-Fi, with the stock Wi-Fi that's in here, which I currently have in here. Uh, supposedly, if you swap out that stock Wi-Fi to something newer and then upgrade the Big Sur, you're fine. But with the stock Wi-Fi, there's all kinds of issues. Now, if enough people want to see that, I will upgrade the Wi-Fi and upgrade this thing to Big Sur and do a video on it. Uh, make sure you let me know down in the comment section. That's the only way I'm gonna know if you're interested in that. And if enough people want it, I'm happy to do it. In Catalina, day-to-day -day performance of this thing is fantastic. Now, again, this is assuming that you've upgraded that RAM and storage. If you haven't, it's gonna be pretty sluggish. But with those upgrades, everything works great. Things open very, very quickly. I can multitask, run most applications, absolutely no problem. Everything works very, very well on this machine. Even like handoff and stuff like that, that works. I did find that it is not capable of doing sidecar because of the older Bluetooth and Wi-Fi that's in here, but that's the only thing that I've really noticed that's missing that I use anyway, but everything else, the sharing of the clipboard and getting your iMessages on this machine, all that kind of stuff works great. Now there is one limitation in general usability and that's the screen resolution of this machine. It's only 1280 by 800, which is pretty small, but it does have a mini display port, hook that up to a monitor and use it with an external monitor at full resolution for whatever that monitor is. That works really well, but the internal resolution for some applications is a little bit small. For everyday kind of just browsing the web and stuff like that, it's fine though. Productivity apps like Office and stuff like that work absolutely fine on this machine, no issues at all, other than you know the little limitation of the screen resolution, but other than that, it works flawlessly. When we start getting into more intensive stuff like some of the media tools, uh, photo editing and stuff like that, it works pretty well. Uh, if you're doing large photos, you'll start hitting some uh, limitations of the core components. Other than that, it works very well for some light photo editing. Even video editing actually works really, really well. I was surprised because in Final Cut Pro, I was actually able to edit 4K video without making proxy files on this machine, which completely blew me away. Now you gotta keep in mind that it's gonna have to be kind of a basic timeline if you start adding tons of color corrections and layers and things like that, it's gonna slow down. There's no way around that. Uh, you can generate proxy media or edit at 1080p instead of 4K. Other than that, it works really well. I did try uh, DaVinci Resolve and that did not work quite as well because DaVinci Resolve is really dependent on GPU rather than CPU. I didn't, didn't even try Premiere on this because Premiere, especially on these older Macs, does not perform well just in all my testing. So I didn't even bother testing it on this one. Gaming on this machine is not too bad if you're playing older games or not very graphically intensive games. Remember, this only has that integrated GPU, so you're not gonna be able to play like full 3D games very well. 
but lighter stuff, older stuff works just fine. Where this thing really excels is if you're streaming to it from another machine, like if you wanna take it on the other side of your house and stream from your gaming rig, you can do it over something like the Steam in-home streaming, which works well on this machine, or something like GeForce Now that works really, really well. For streaming games and stuff, this machine's awesome for that. For playing games natively, uh, you gotta stick with some of the older games or less graphically intensive games. Now, there is a way to improve the performance for both games and some of the media creation, and that's by using an external GPU. You can use a script called Purge Wrangler, to enable this machine to use an external GPU just like some of the newer Thunderbolt 3 Macs do. If you wanna see a video on that, I'll put a link up in the corner and down below that I did a video on that quite a while ago, but the process is still the same. This dramatically improves the performance both in 3D games and a lot of the processing in uh, video editing. It makes DaVinci Resolve work much, much better because you have a full GPU behind it now. And even some of the effects and rendering in Final Cut Pro are improved with adding this external GPU. Now, this is an additional cost, so you may or may not want to do this, but it is an option for you on these machines. As far as pricing, these things are all over the place. I've seen them as low as 150 bucks, which is around what I got this one for, all the way up to 250 to $300. Obviously, it depends on if it's been upgraded or not, but it also changes from like week to week. You could check it today and then check it in two weeks and it could be a completely different price. So just keep an eye on Craigslist or Gumtree if you're overseas, Facebook Marketplace, uh, eBay, wherever you buy your gear and just keep tabs on that and wait for that price to come down a little bit and then just snag it up. Uh, obviously, if it's been upgraded already, spend a little more money on that because then you don't have to deal with upgrading it yourself and you can just get it and use it right out of the box. So who is this machine good for? Well, if you're somebody that is looking to get into the Apple ecosystem, this might be a good choice because they're relatively affordable and you have the, you know, all the handoff and everything. You're part of that ecosystem at that point. If you just want a reliable machine that you can do basic computing, browsing the web, productivity, that kind of stuff, or very, very light media creation, this might be a decent option for you. And uh, like I said, the basic really light gaming as well, or game streaming, this is a good option for that as well. If you're doing heavy production, you want a super beefy, powerful computer, you know, this is not the way to go. You probably want to spend a little more money and get something newer. I'm going to be having some videos on the M1 Max coming up. Those are options, great options if you want something beefier that you're going to be doing some media creation on. But for entry level, basic computer use, this is a great machine. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you found this useful or informative. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you really liked it, as usual, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I will see you in the next video and thanks so much for stopping by.